Mate, come here. What's up? Look, you know the new internet, right? Yeah. I'm just downloading the game on the PlayStation 5. Let's see how fast it's gonna take. Go on then. <laughs> oh my god. The entirety of Warzone in five minutes. Hey guys, how are you all doing? I know people absolutely love my networking videos, especially when there's really, really fast speeds involved. So I think you're gonna love this one because today you're gonna learn something and go really, really fast. So to this day, here on TechFlow, we've done many videos about how to improve your Wi-Fi or internet performance at home, especially in our new series, Pimp My Wi-Fi. We've actually got a new episode coming up very shortly with Tom Syndicate, so make sure you subscribe for that. Three years ago, we made a video here on TechFlow called The Fastest Way to Get Broadband in the UK. And in that specific video, I demoed BT's new service, which was actually a 300 meg connection. And I said, that is probably the best internet you will ever get to a residential home. Now boy, has a lot changed in the last few years. So, in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about the numerous different ways that we can get broadband to our homes and the resulting speeds of that connection. Because quite often, if you've got a lot of people trying to get online through the same connection, the problem may not be poor Wi-Fi performance, but the actual bandwidth allocated to your broadband line. Now I'm going to be talking here specifically about the UK because that's where I'm from. And like the rest of the world, we have access to cable broadband through one company called Virgin Media. You'll know if you can get Virgin Media at your property because, well, simply you'll either have a coax cable coming straight to your property or you won't. I'll also put the postcode checker down in the description. The Virgin Media coax cable uses some technology called Doxis to get the actual speeds to you. And right now, as of the recording of this video, the fastest speeds are 1000 megabits per second with their Gig1 service. And like I said, if you wanna see if you can get this, I'll put the postcode checker down below that like button. Now all of the other providers here in the UK, and I mean pretty much all of them, except specialist providers like Wisps and Satellite Broadband, get their service to you in either one of three ways. Now if you're really unlucky, you've got ADSL, which stands for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line. And the maximum speed for this connection is around 20 megabits per second. This is basically broadband over the phone line. The second is FTTC, which stands for Fiber to the Cabinet. And this improves on ADSL, by still using the phone line between your house and the street cabinet, but then it goes from the street cabinet to the exchange, that is then fiber. So the determining factor of your speeds when you're using fiber to the cabinet is the distance between your house and the cabinet. If the cabinet's right outside your house, then you can expect speeds between 60 up to 80 megabits per second. If you're one of the unlucky ones with fiber to the cabinet and you're a long way from the cabinet, you could expect speeds around 20 to 30 meg. Now, number three, FTTP. It's what we're looking at today, and the keen eyes of you will have guessed it, it stands for fiber to the property or premises. And yes, like you've guessed, it is basically a fiber optic cable from the exchange that comes straight to your property. So in theory, fiber optic can support multiple gigabits per second, and you've got a thousand megabits in a gigabit, which is just insane. So theoretically, what I'm about to show you today is just the beginning, or is it? When you see the speeds that I'm pulling today with my new connection, let me know with a comment down below how many years it's gonna be until this video is outdated. Now remember, a single 4K video stream only needs around 20 megabits per second to successfully run. Now this is where the internet comes into my property. This is called a fiber terminal, and this is a really old version, but basically what this is doing is converting the fiber signal to an ethernet, which is then being sent through my home's wiring upstairs to the Dynalink router. Now the reason I'm using this Dynalink router specifically is number one, I want this test to be fair, so I don't want all of my devices on my network while I'm doing my speed test. 
tests. Number two, this is Wi-Fi 6. So after we've done this, I'm gonna do some Wi-Fi speed tests and explain the bottlenecks and drawbacks of Wi-Fi. So I've got my RJ45 cable here. This is coming all the way from the fiber terminal downstairs in my hallway. So I'm gonna plug that into the back of our dynamic router and then plug into the iPad. Now this would be a really good time to note that most Ethernet ports, like the one found on this dongle right here, and also the ports that are found uh, on the back of this Dynalink router, they are all around a gigabit per second. There's new ports that can support two and a half gigabit all the way up to 10 gigabit, but these are usually reserved for enterprise gear and network switches. This is the fastest broadband you can currently get in the UK. There you go. How mad is that? 900 megabits per second. And look at the time in the top corner. It's 10 p.m. right now. That is the definition of peak time. Now, upload speeds are never the same as download speeds. They are always significantly reduced, but as you can see, I've got an upload here of 120. And because this is fiber to my property, I have zero interruptions in this service, and these are the speeds that I get pretty much round the clock. But only if I'm connected via an Ethernet cable. Now, like anything good, it's not that simple. I'm still using the Dynalink router here connected to my laptop directly via Ethernet, so we can confirm we've got nothing else on the network using the internet. And there we go, 920 on the dot in. Works fine over wired, but what about wireless? Now, if we take a look into the Dynalink settings here, one thing any good router should do is allow you to separate the Wi-Fi bands. Each router gives off two bands, 2.4, as you can see here, indicated by our Dyna 2 name, and if we change that to five gigahertz, we can then see our Dyna 5 network. So we can choose, as the end user, what band we're connecting to. Now, if you manage to log into your router, one of the things you'll be able to change is the actual channel. Now, the channel is different on both 2.4, as you can see here, and if I change it to five gigahertz, we will have a load more channels we can play with. Changing this setting may increase your Wi-Fi performance. So as you can see here from my phone over Wi-Fi, we definitely aren't getting the full 920 that we got over the hardwire. However, we are getting a very, very incredible 700 Mbps, which is absolutely insane over Wi-Fi. Now, I do wanna remind you that this is ideal conditions. We don't have any other devices on our network and I can literally touch the router. Distance will kill your speed. So I've got two phones in front of me. This is my daily driver, 13 Pro Max. It has Wi-Fi 6 out the gate. This is an older Android phone, Pixel 4 to be exact. This has five gigahertz Wi-Fi, but doesn't have Wi-Fi 6. So as you can see here on our Google Pixel, we are connected to the Dyna 2 network, which is our 2.4 gigahertz network coming from our Dynalink router in the room directly above this. I'm gonna go to Wi-Fi Man to conduct a speed test. Now these speeds will be pretty much unusable for the majority of people. Yeah, look, as you can see, we're getting no more here than 20 meg. In fact, I haven't seen any more than 15. That is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi for you. It's so congested and can be affected by things as little as just turning on the microwave. Now from this screen, you can see that our signal strength is minus 47, which is pretty much the best you will get. And we only managed 12 meg down, which is really, really diabolical considering we've got a gigabit in. Now, I've done another test. As you can see, it's a slight bit better, but we're getting no more than 30 meg, which is pretty much unusable. So now let's switch to five gigahertz. So there we are, connected to the Dyna5 network. Now let's start our speed test. So this should be, I would guess, 200 to 300. Yeah, there we go. We're getting just about 200, as I said, 194. That is a hell of a lot better than what we got over on our 2.4 gigahertz network. So that demonstrates the complete and utter difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now let's try 5 gigahertz, but on Wi-Fi 6. So there we go, you can see I'm connected to the Dyna5 network here on my 13 Pro Max. So again, let's go here to Wi-Fi Man and start a speed test. And there you go, as you can see, we're getting about 350, 340 megabits per second on the Wi-Fi 6 on the five gigahertz band. So that sort of gives you a little bit 
of an idea as to the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and how much of a difference that being on each of those networks will actually make to your end user experience. So to finish up, yes, it really does make a difference as to how you connect to your router as to the speeds that you will receive as the end user. Like I've said, the best way to connect is with a cable. If you can't do that, Wi-Fi will have to be your best friend and I would recommend using the five gigahertz band. If you really can't, the 2.4 should do for some general internet applications. Now what I would recommend to people is create pockets of Wi-Fi round your house with numerous access points. If that sounds like something that you want to do to improve your broadband performance, we've already made a video on it so you can click the card or check the link down there below. But I hope you guys have enjoyed us checking out the UK's fastest broadband to this date, which is the start of 2022. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, <laughs>